Welcome back. Former Trump lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen's testimony is apparently going to be keeping Democrats on Capitol Hill for months. The Associated Press reports Democrats are going to be investigating Trump's ca uh, campaign ties to Russia, potential conflicts of interest, possible money laundering, and other oversight matters that Democrats say were ignored under GOP control. And that includes calling a number of people in Trump's orbit to testify, potentially including Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg, who Cohen mentioned multiple times in testimony in front of the House Oversight Committee. Weisselberg signed one of Cohen's reimbursement checks for paying alleged hush money to women ahead of, ahead of the 2016 election. Joining me now, Ariana Berg, former federal prosecutor with the Southern District of New York, and Mark Fisher, senior editor with The Washington Post. He's also the co-author of Trump Revealed. And Mark, let me start with you. You know um, a lot about uh, Alan Weisselberg and the role that he has played in sort of everything Trump, right? The Trump Organization, uh, the Trump Foundation. What, what is his role so far? How, what has he been doing with authorities? He's had some limited immunity. Uh, and what can he help Congress understand? Well, look, in the, in the world, uh, the intricate web of companies and entities that uh, the Trump Organization has created through the years uh, to mask some of the deals that unravel that web of uh, entities because Alan Weisselberg has spent a lifetime putting together that web. And so he has been talking to prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. They gave him a limited immunity deal uh, so that he would come forward and talk. Uh, but there's no evidence that he has been terribly forthcoming. Uh, and so if he's called before Congress, I think we could continue to expect that he would be uh, rather less than completely forthcoming. He's the guy who knows everything. He knows exactly how uh, the Trump Organization has structured its deals around the world. Uh, how they uh, dealt with the Trump Foundation, how they uh, did the hush money payments, those kinds of things. Uh, so this is an absolutely integral person. Uh, it, this is a small family operation, the uh, Trump Organization. And other than the blood relatives, Alan Weisselberg is the number one person mm -hmm. who knows how it all fits together. So, Ariana, let's, let's just uh, follow this through a little bit. Weisselberg, first of all, we, we say alleged hush money payments. These are now on the record. They're, they're processed through a court. They're not alleged. They paid these women or at least Michael Cohen paid these women, and Michael Cohen brought receipts about who paid him back. So in this sense, if Weisselberg is this closely tied to things that were done that were illegal, um, how, what, what kind of footing does Weisselberg have to not cooperate with Congress or, for that matter, with the Southern District of New York? Yes, that's right. Alan Weisselberg really presents, I think, the biggest potential body blow to Donald Trump, as well as to his children and any other Trump Organization employees. But that, of course, assumes that when he comes to testify, if he comes to testify, that he tells the truth. And as you've just mentioned, Ali, there, there could be potential criminal exposure there. In fact, I would suspect that there is quite a bit of criminal exposure there for Alan Weisselberg. And we have, as prosecutors and Congress as well, certain tools to try to incentivize people to speak truthfully and under oath. I'm, I'm guessing that he would assert his Fifth Amendment mm -hmm. right against self-incrimination if he were called to testify in front of Congress. Our understanding is that he's already been given limited immunity with the Southern District of New York. And my understanding is that that was just for grand jury testimony, largely against Michael Cohen. Um, and in fact, we, we know that Alan Weisselberg is still employed by the Trump Organization, still goes to that office building every morning. Um, and so his allegiances are strong and clear with Donald Trump. There's also been reporting that he's in a joint defense agreement with uh, Donald Trump. And so presumably we have to worry about him passing along information about what questions in preparation they want to ask of him. So immunity would be certainly something that they would have to deal with if he were to come testify. And uh, that would really be the only way to guarantee his testimony. If I were one of the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York that were working on this case uh, against Michael Cohen and potentially Trump Organization employees, uh, I would not be ecstatic about uh. Alan Weisselberg coming to testify in Congress. You never want a potential witness in your case to be on the record under oath with dueling potential statements. That creates lots of problems and also it might interfere with my ability to potentially sign him up as a cooperator 
or charge him later. So there are a lot of differences here, Mark, between uh, Michael Cohen and Alan Weissenberg. The first one is that Michael Cohen's already gone through a trial. He's had the book thrown at him, uh, and now maybe he's trying to help his situation. Weisselberg isn't there. He's on the other side of this thing. Uh, to Ariana's point, we don't know uh, what his legal exposure is, but there is a there is a difference. If 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 two of these guys, Michael Cohen and Alan Weisselberg, are both going to tell you everything they know, it's actually notwithstanding the payments of hush money, Weisselberg probably knows as much, if not more. Oh, Weisselberg knows a good deal more. Weisselberg has been at the inner core of the Trump world uh, since about 1973 when, when Trump's father, Fred Trump, hired him as an accountant. He's really spent his entire life, this is a 71-year-old man who spent his entire adult life working uh, for the Trumps and uh, most of that time in Trump Tower. He's one of the most trusted people and one of the most loyal people in the entire Trump organization. Uh, and he certainly knows everything that's gone on through all the years. Uh, in sharp contrast to Michael Cohen, who, although he was there for more than a decade, uh, was really one of a series of lawyers who Donald Trump employed uh, to uh, be his fixer, his enforcer, to make problems go away. Uh, those lawyers tended to come and go over the years yeah. with Trump, but Alan Weisselberg is the one continuing central force in that organization. Ariana, let me ask you about the House Intel Committee expecting to question Felix Sater last this, uh, last, uh, later this month. He's a Russian-born business associate of President Trump's. He worked with Cohen on the Trump Tower Moscow project. His name came up a number of times in Cohen's testimony. How important is this? Well, I would say it's very important. Um, he's coming to testify apparently March 14th. Uh, Adam Schiff says that he expects most of that testimony, or he's going to try to make most of that testimony public. Uh, I'm skeptical whether they're going to be able to do that because, as you mentioned, Ali, Felix Sater's testimony will likely talk about the Trump Tower Moscow deal and also any efforts that there were coordination uh, with the Russian government to interfere in the U.S. elections. Little uh, known fact about Felix Sater is that we, we know from reporting that there was a November 2015 email between Michael Cohen and Felix Sater in which Felix Sater says, our, our boy, buddy, our boy, uh, can be elected as U.S. president. We can help engineer that. And he says something to the effect of, and I'll make sure that the whole Putin team gets behind it. So we Ouch. don't know, you know, uh, it could just be all uh, big talk. Right. We, we never know. We don't know what actions were undertaken to follow up on that. But that would be certainly a line of inquiry that the uh, representatives would want to pursue. And I would guess, uh, given the Mueller investigation, they would have to do that in a closed door session. It is an interesting situation where you have all these blustery exaggerators who say things and you can't, it's hard to determine whether they were just bragging about something over which they had no power or whether they actually went and did something and made phone calls and arranged meetings. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.